Hey, what's up everybody? Mike back with another video. So today, this video has been a long time coming. You guys are constantly asking me questions on Facebook, Twitter, on the channel here as well. What's a good projector? How do I do this? How do I get my audio? How do I get the image sharper? Is a projector screen worth it? So today I'm going to be trying to answer all of those questions. Everything in this video will apply to both DLP projectors and full-size projectors. Uh, we're going to be installing a ceiling mount. Now you can actually get a ceiling mount like the one you can see, or a full-size projector mount that can accommodate a larger projector. So let's get started. So before we begin our installation process, a recent comment was quite intriguing. What's the difference between a DLP projector and an LED projector? Why does a DLP projector seem to cost more at the same resolution than an LED projector? So let me explain the two different technologies and why that is. DLP projectors rely primarily on a DLP chip called the Digital Micro Mirror Device, or DMD for short, made up of around 2 million teeny tiny mirrors, no wider than a fifth of the human hair. Each mirror in this chip is capable of independent adjustment, moving towards and away from the light source to create a dark or a light pixel. The image at the moment is in grayscale, then a beam of light passes through a spinning color wheel, that information is then fed into the DMD. That said, not all spinning color wheels are created equal. Higher end projectors will use more than the red, blue and green found in the cheaper ones. They can also accommodate cayenne, magenta and yellow. And instead of the standard 16.7 million colors delivered by the recently reviewed P8i DLP projector, link in the video description by the way if you want to go check that out, one with a six wheel color can actually deliver 35 trillion colors. Holy sh and by the way, they cost an absolute crap load. So what about LED projectors? Well, first, LED projectors are not a form of display technology like DLP is, but the lighting used inside. They use an array of efficient, long-lasting red, green, and blue LEDs to display an image. Most LED projectors you'll find these days on Amazon, Gearbest, etc. will have an average lifespan of between 15 and 20,000 hours minimum, and then they'll go upwards like a GP90, which has in excess of 40,000. Another term you may have heard when looking for projectors on Amazon is Pico. Pico projectors are aptly named for their small form factor. They also commonly use LED method of projection as its preferred choice. So let's get started guys. So as you can see I'm in my bedroom and I've already worked out that I'm going for a 65, a little bit over 65 inch screen. That's going to be my seating placement, or well in this case it'll be my lying placement for the perfect viewing angle. So I'm happy with all of this. Now I'm going to keep this image on screen and talk you through the following steps that I did to get here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is work out your seating placement or lying placement if this is going in a bedroom. Then what we're going to do is we need to work out the height of your screen. We're going to take that figure and we're going to multiply it by approximately three. Depends if you're using a DLP, LCD or LED. But I'm going to take 33 inches times it by three. It gives me roughly 2.5 meters. That is the distance my projector needs to be away from the screen at 65 inches. Once we're all happy with all of this, we can actually mark out the holes for the actual bracket. Make sure the bracket is perfectly aligned to the center of the screen. If you're completely happy that your holes are perfectly aligned with the center of your image, go ahead and drill out the holes. The raw plugs that came with this particular bracket were utter crap. Don't use them. What I should have used was hollow wall anchors like these, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get these out and replace them for the hollow wall anchors. Much stronger fit. After that, tighten the whole lot up and then install your projector. Now this will make reviewing projectors in the future perfect. Then what you need to do, fire up your projector, use your actual grid screen, use your keystone correction, use your zoom, use your focus wheel, perfectly align everything. Use a spirit level to check the vertical and the horizontal after you think you've aligned everything. If this all looks good, then we're ready to go. Then what we're gonna do, all that's left, is admire your handiwork as you can see. It looks pretty damn good. This projector mount, I'll hit you up with a link in the video description and I think it costs about five pounds. Turn off the lights and admire your handiwork. Perfectly focused, aligned image, ready to go. We're not far off the end now, guys, and then we're gonna talk about audio and cable managing, but for now, we're still not done with the image. Now, what else can we do to make our image perfect is actually work out the perfect seating placements. Online tools are available to help you do this for any make and model of projector. I'll link it in the video description. As a guide, it should be twice the width of your actual projected screen size, so east to west, it should be that times two for the minimum distance, and every projector will have a maximum distance that's what you need to work out. So if you get your seating placement right, your experience will be a hundred times better than if you're just sitting way too close or way too far. 
You can spend little as £50 or you can spend £1,000 on your audio setup, but because we're looking at budget projectors, it's not really feasible. Ceiling speakers, a pack of two 50 watt ones with speaker wire on Amazon will set you back about £80, which is quite a nice option, but you have to wire them up. The SB1800BL from Yamaha, those are speakers that I actually used to own, really highly ranked on Amazon, and you know what? They delivered a nice audio experience. As far as options goes that you bought yourself an £80 projector, you don't want to waste too much money, what can you do? Let's take a look at that. So if you've already got an existing Bluetooth speaker or a soundbar, you can just use the auxiliary inputs on the actual soundbar and plug it into the projector. This particular one on screen has actually built in Bluetooth. I think it costs about £50, I'll link it in the video description. You can use any old PC speakers or bookshelf speakers like these Logitech Z200s, really good, I really like them. It used to form part of my Snow White setup. A really cheap and affordable way to transmit audio from your projector is to use a wireless transmitter and receiver like this one. I'll put a link for that video in the description check it out. Now AudioCast is another cool option. I've been meaning to do a review on these, I haven't had a chance, but this will actually allow you to connect up any existing speakers to one sound source. This is the way we'd use it with a budget projector setup. Um, we'll take a look at that again some point in the future. Now I think I've jabbered on enough for this video. If you enjoyed this then feel free to leave me a like. On the next episode we're going to be actually focusing on white wall versus a projector screen, what kind of projector screen should you buy, and what's the top five DLP projectors that you can buy for 200. Until next time, my name is Mike, this is Tech404, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.